Hey, everybody, the triple option's back. Offensive linemen commit time. And tonight we are talking about Big Meech, Larry Uva, Charlotte transfer offensive lineman, Dimitri Emmanuel. And I am here with uh, my two, my two guys. They're not transfer porter guys. They're surefire starters. I'm here with Adam Brown. I'm here with Kevin Little. What's up? What's up, friends? We're talking, talking about a commit today, oh, boys. Yeah, the offensive good. line commit. Oh, there's nothing better than that. It really just gets down to my plums. <laughs> yes, it did. Yeah, I can see the nice little form of saliva running down. It's starting to get a little graphic over there. It's starting to steam up on your camera. It's pretty awkward. But anyway, Adam, I'm with you. I don't I don't express my passion in the in the same like outward way that you are about this, but I'm pretty jazzed up too. Cause this is a solid kid. This is a guy that used to play for Alex Atkins when he was the OC slash offensive line coach at the University of Charlotte. And by all like measures, um this is a this is a solid take. Like one of the better, if not the best, offensive linemen in the transfer portal right now. Are you guys excited? Oh yeah, I mean, we were sitting in a dead period. We were wondering if anything good was going to happen. <sighs> so dead. Um, this kid <laughs> has been in the portal for for a minute now. It it seems, and we get news he was on campus, and a few minutes later he's he's committed. So feels good to have some momentum for for the first time in a while. <laughs> Absolutely. Like anybody from the BMF family, he did all his dirt in silence, which I appreciate, like the sign of a true gangster disciple. So once again, it was a very, very I, I'll watch a lot of gangland guys. So sorry, I'm going to apologize <laughs> to that man. But like weird recruitment, right? As soon as he went into the portal, it was like, oh, he's tied to Alex Tatkins. Didn't say a word, didn't do an interview, announced two offers, one to Boston College. One to uh, the failed IPO sanctuary of John Ruiz, the University of Miami. (laughs) And that was it. Didn't even announce Florida State's offer. And then, boom, he's on campus uh, yesterday, commits. And we're we're looking at a guy that's going to contribute heavily, if not be a starter from day one, uh, for the Florida State Seminole. So I think at the end end of the video, we'll talk about where we see uh, Dimitri fitting in positional fit you know what maybe kind of project what we think of the starting five to be so stick after the film review to listen to that and also maybe like a little hint at some more announcements Uh, you'll find out but anyway the film that we're going to be looking up today kevin it is actually from 2019 dimitri's freshman year his only year working with alex atkins he was the left guard number 70 and it's also interesting because it was his first year starting at the college level but it was actually his best year statistically by PFF. So it's the Alex Atkins effect. So just be looking for number 70, the left guard, uh, roll it. This against Clemson. Yeah. I think it also gives us a good indication of what he's going to look like against the top level of, of competition that he's going to face at Florida state. So, um, yeah, he's, he's the left guard. So look for number 70 here at the bottom of the screen. Yeah, strikes a heavy blow on that linebacker. Is that James? Yeah, Skalski? I think that's Skalski. that's James Skalski. Yeah. Skalski in like his seventeenth year. Well, yeah, this yeah. was two He's years ago, so forty six at the time. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Go, well, he would go and play four more. So <laughs> <laughs> he's only got three kids right now. <laughs> it's like so tight footwork. Looks looks more agile here than what he does in more recent film. Um, Why do you think that is? Injury or just getting bigger or what? Yeah, I don't, what do I don't think, know yeah? enough. I don't know enough about his about him to to be able to really say intelligently um could be injury could be he's added some some mass uh and he's bounced around positions it's tough to say good pass block right there though really held his own yeah he does a nice job in a phone booth um i don't think he's gonna beat you as you ask him to get more outside of his kind of uh outside of his shoulders and outside of his kind of a uh, little box there but he does a nice job of staying in front of guys he, I, I think he's pretty powerful yeah, I don't think so. When we were looking at Bless Harris, we were the the main concern was seeing that strength carry over from a from a smaller program, but I, mm-hmm. I don't think he's he has that problem necessarily. No, seems really aggressive at that first point of contact. As you always see, he's he's always reestablishing the line of scrimmage, which is really what you want to look for, especially on those guys in the interior. Good, uses his arms well too, Adam. That's he does a nice job of getting stuff. movement on the nose there. Nose stunts towards him. Yeah, is, that yeah. Chris, is that Christian Wilkins? No, Christian Wilkins wouldn't have been there two years ago. He'd have been three. PFF seems to really like his pass pass blocking. Um, seems pretty 
uh, lukewarm on his run blocking. I think that's some. I think that's some of the athleticism, honestly. That I think he. So, this is a couple of nice first steps there. You obviously can't really see them, see them, but he's on a good path. And to be honest with you, I wonder how much. Go ahead, Adam. No, no, no. It's fine. I was going to say that PFF grade. I wonder how much of that's influenced by. I mean, recently he's been working like he's been their tackle, right? He's been their right tackle, and here I think he looks really comfortable and effective at guard, which is yeah, where we too. kind of think he's going to play at Florida State. Now he's got the benefit of not having a guy head up on him, so sure. that that helps in this in this film. Um, I'd like to see him with a guy playing head up on him. See how he handles that a little bit, uh, as obviously you, you tend to get a little more immediate pressure. He's mm-hmm. going to get kind of free releases up on the linebackers here. Um, I'd like to see him pulling. We know how much. Uh, I think I think there are some pulling clips later on in this game. Um, oh, good. That'd be good to see. But here, you know, this is a gap block. He blocks back on the nose. Not a, not devastating by any stretch of the imagination. No. Right. Does his job. Kind of gets the guy out of the way. Seals it off. Yeah. So far, no no right, missed assignments. Yeah. There you go. Uh, so that's good. I mean, he looks agile enough. Yeah, so the goal here is he's Redirects. pulling. He's, he wants to knock this guy out to make this as big of a hole as possible. So either mm. he wants to crash him inside to give a nice alley for the running back to go through or push him out. He sees that the defensive end's kind of playing contain here. Gets a hand on him. Yep. Yeah, it's fine. Does the nice job. Part is, nice part is he's athletic enough here to redirect as he gets up the field. You can see he's kind of expecting him. Oh, let's play before he was expecting him in the line more. So this is, this is the play. Yeah. He's expecting him at the line of scrimmage more. And this guy's up the field. He's able to redirect on it. Yeah. That's good. I, I like to see that though. Cause I, I did have concerns about the movement. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So uh, one of the good news about him is since he is an Alex Ek- Ekins guy, I imagine there's uh going to be some similar verbiage it's going to be an easier transition than what you saw yeah. at a uh, saw from Caden Lyles who, who who's struggling to pick up some of that stuff good block there right yeah, it's coming off on the RPO I f- pretty uh, good first step nose. fires well, off the ball really I think well. so Trey yeah I think so yeah. too gets on the nose again kind of loses leverage mm-hmm. you wouldn't look at this and say oh wow he's outmatched against a no. against a very superior front yeah, Clemson now, is the number one team in the country uh, at the time of this clip. Yeah. I think he does a now, good here's job. A guy, here. Here's a guy head up on him, right, Adam? Yeah, he's probably a shade, but... Yeah, this is... Oh. They're, yeah, they're, they're, Clemson's running that three-man look. Yeah. But either way, he's able to keep the outside leverage on, on he does slant. Here. He does slant to him. So, yeah, they play some games up front there. Yeah. yeah. And he does a nice job of running. Yeah. I mean, look, that that's gonna play. I think I think that's the, the thing about this film is that um as long as you don't see him getting just straight up beat by Clemson, this is this is yeah. a positive sign, right? Like Absolutely. Yeah, yeah you're hundred percent right. Um and I, I think he's holding his own. He's getting out on the screen here, looks yeah. agile, getting out on the screen at the bottom bottom part. Pulling again. Let's see I, that. I think he tends to lose people after he makes hand contact. So you see that again here. So he's 70 making contact here, but then kind of lets the guy slip under him. Ah. Yes. Yeah, that's a good observation. Like the first the first uh, strike is pretty good. And then like after that, it sort of kind of gets a little bit lost in the scrum. Doesn't stick to him the throughout the duration of the block all the time. But usually that, that first redirects enough to where it's not a dead play at all by any means. Um, so I think PFF said that he's given up five sacks his whole career, which interesting. Uh, that's that's a guard and tackle. Yeah, Jeff? yeah, at, at both. He he's played that one probably equal amount of both. So here he is at the bottom of the screen again. Yeah, they're zone blocking. Yeah, looks like it's either. Probably some sort of play action, but yeah, yeah, for sure. Right, it's, I think it's, oh, an no, it's a glance, yeah, yeah. So well, he does a nice job, though. I mean, he's again, he's working up to the backer. He's showing, I think he's showing some of the athleticism that I was concerned about. 
Yeah, but that's stuff that Mike Norvell is going to do too. I don't know necessarily out of like a zone blocking scheme, but it's going to be run action when it's actually an RPO or pass to try to yeah. confuse the defense. Absolutely. So, I mean, they're and like Atkins is the OC. I mean, Norvell is calling the plays, but I mean, Atkins is going to be such a factor on game day that I, I do think that the easy transition of this kid coming to play for Atkins again um, alleviates a lot of the concern I'd have for a post spring football offensive lineman. Right. I would agree with that. Yeah. I'm very impressed with the movement he gets though. He, he doesn't, he doesn't play at the line of scrimmage. He moves guys, which is good. We haven't, haven't seen a ton of that. And against a faster linebacker here, he's able to get in front and stay in front. Still makes him. His, his balance is good. His butt's back. He's got a nice big chest keeps his elbows tucked in tight i mean he looks like an alex atkins coach offensive lineman i agree it's always a good sign when adam starts commenting on the ass that's when you know that we're <laughs> we're, we're talking we're talking about a guy that adam likes there it is <laughs> that's a good show yeah it's, there you go kev tell us straight that fantastic okay. yeah, just... <laughs> <laughs> no dude that's good i like that not it's his not, ass the block it's a little sprint or a little draw action there it, it almost like looks little... like Looks like they're trying. Looks like they're running a little bit of draw. He takes a little pass set, and then mm-hmm. I might be wrong though. That might just be their their zone foot, their outside zone footwork. Yeah, I think he's kind of taking a weird bucket step. Everybody else seems to be taking that half step yeah. back uh, here, the bucket step. Yeah, I, I for for his for his freshman game, I'm um I'm encouraged by the variety of like different movements that he's making from that position. Right. Like they, they really do have, yeah, they have him. He looks pretty crisp in his different movements. Right. I mean, yeah. I mean, this is his fourth game. He gets his ass kicked there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, against yeah, the number one team in the country. Yeah. Yeah. Smash, but you know, it is to be expected. Yeah. It gets stood yeah. up a little bit. All right, let's see uh, what he's doing here. Yeah, I'll lose him in the beginning. Yeah, it's kind of hard to tell. So um, early on, so he's at the top of the screen. It looks like there's a little stunt here, so we can see how he passes off this. They're bringing out overload that yeah. Venables loves so much. So this guy's kind of stunting here, trying to get the guard to follow him, and then sending a linebacker this way. So you can kind of see how he handles the stunt. Hopefully we won't have to deal with that much. Or slide, Florida State. Or sliding everybody. Yeah, so they slip. Helps. So he gets to stay it's on his, the It's not his top. guy that ends up getting the pressure, which is good. He actually but does again, a good yeah, job they, with this guy. Yeah, they kind of stalemate at the line of the scrimmage. Gives you an idea of how powerful he is. I mean. As a true freshman. Mm-hmm. No, this is going to be a market upgrade from what they had at one of the at, at, at the right guard spot at least. Man, there was especially near the end of the year, there were some plays where the interior of Florida State's offensive line got just destroyed. Yeah. And well, you had poor DLT who, you know, yeah, he's not the same. The injury, he, yeah. he wasn't. It, it's so it's such a shame that you weren't able to get hundred percent him back last year. But even throughout the spring this year, I mean, they worked Darius Washington there, and then he got dinged up and. He should be good to go, but, uh, you know, it, it was a hole. Um, you know, we did spring spring game film review, and it was – we were looking at Zane Herring, and we were looking at uh, – Herring played a lot there, but we were looking at Thomas Schrader, talking about maybe Cade Lyles sliding over or Marie Smith, and it's it's like yeah, none of those none of those answers – Trying really, to get a little bleak, right? Yeah, none of those what, answers what, yeah. really give you – inspire a lot of confidence, and I think that, that, that this kid does or this young man does um, – it's another versatile piece. It's just another versatile piece, right? It's yeah. uh, besides Cade Lyle, like Bless Harris, guy that can play inside outside if you need. Uh, this guy, Demetri Manuel, inside outside, Darish Washington, inside outside. Um, it's just a bunch of guys to where the inevitable, mm-hmm. the inevitable injury happens, the roll up, or just you know maybe a guy just is a poor matchup against the you know having having a bad couple series, or maybe a guy's just tired. It's not. You're, you're not going to DEFCON, like, whichever one is the bad DEFCON. We've always gone to that. I don't know if it's one or four, but we're going to the nuclear <laughs> DEFCON immediately. We don't have to do that as much anymore, right? Yeah, you're you're yeah. getting, like, a legit seven seven to eight man almost rotation. It's I, I'm, I'm very encouraged by that film based on his age, level of competition, and just the um, 
he looked pretty damn fluid, to be honest with you, for the different amount of stuff that they had him do. Yeah. So, I so do you, anything else to add besides that before we start talking about where we see him slot in, maybe who we think his line of mates will be? No, right? no, I think that the, I think it's been, I think it's the the film did all the talking. I think he did That's a great job of summarizing. I think you did a great job of summarizing kind of our thoughts. <laughs> Thanks, brother. I guess it's what I do. I take I take the smart people stuff and I distill it into a delicious moonshine for everybody to imbibe. <laughs> now, listen, I think that this kid is going to be a starter on the offensive line. I mean, he played a lot of tackle for Charlotte. Uh, I, I we we and many other people think that he's going to be a factor on the interior. I mean, yeah. you guys, is that what you guys think? So based on that, Absolutely. we think he's going to be at one of the guard spots. So right now, um, Adam, I'll let you go first. Kevin, I don't know. The, I'll let you go too. If yours is different, <laughs> if it, I just I don't want this guy jumping at me through the screen, all sweaty and saliva. He talking about <laughs> offensive line. <laughs> so Kevin, you can go if yours is different. But Adam, what's your projected starting five right now? Yeah, I mean, I think you're looking at Robert Scott and Dylan Gibbons on the left side. Okay, you wouldn't you wouldn't mess that up to keep the communication stuff the same from last year. No, I don't think I would. Um, okay, I you, so I would I. Got, I agree with you. Yeah, I think you've got to fit there. Um, I don't think they want to play Maurice Smith at center this year, even though he did a nice job of kind of stepping up in the spring and embracing the battle that uh, presented itself. I this is game were, one. This is game one depth chart. That's what I want. Not not exactly who's going to play the most during the season. But yeah, no, we, no, think that Kaden, we still think that Caden Lyles will be the game one starter. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Okay. Um, if I had my druthers, if it was me, Ooh, I'd be druthers. I'd be getting I'd be getting Darius Washington some looks there and see. Oh, that's interesting. That's just how well I get how how well I or how what my best five looks like. Um, and then I think uh, you look at Emmanuel at right guard, and I'm going to ride the Bless Air strain. I, I know that there's a lot of thought out there that he's a sweet guy, uh-huh. a lot of that discussion, but I like but what I what? saw from him. A swing, a swing. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Kev with the inappropriate jokes. Wow. wow. I I rubbed off. Where the hell did that come stuff. from? <laughs> like a proud, I'm like a proud father. Um, <laughs> that's interesting because the projections that I've seen, most people have Darius Washington at that right tackle spot. But you have oh. been consistent in your praise for Bless Harris and the different amount of things that he can do. And I tell you what, based on this film, um, having those two guys at the right side present some interesting um, combinations and some run action that Mike Norvell and co can do. I mean, those are two pretty, pretty athletic guys. I mean, what's got to get bless Harris's strength up, but he was there. Mm -hmm. Um, But that's an interesting, that's an interesting right side. Um, So you've got Scott Gibbons, you said Lyles, but you actually would. Would you? I would want love to see Washington. I, yeah, I would like to see Darius at center. Personally. Okay. Yeah, so, so okay. So so we got Scott Gibbons, Washington, Emmanuel Harris. Mm-hmm. That's a fun. That's a fun start. And, and they did work Washington out a lot at spring at center. So I mean, not not totally outside the realm of possibility for sure. Uh, Kev, what do you think? What do you think the day one or game one du- Duquesne? Duquesne uh, start lineup is. Yeah, I think I think I agree with AB. The biggest question has to be center. Um, what are you going to do there? I, I, based off what I saw from from Lyles this spring, I'm hesitant to say that he's going to be ready in the fall. Um, but I, mm. I I also think you don't want Marie Smith. He he's undersized, and w- while he, he can hold his own, I I don't think he's the kind of guy that you want to be living or dying with at center. So. Um, that's going to be a big question mark for me. And I think, I think I'm with AB with bless Harris. I think he's going to be your starting tackle. I think this guy's going to be, I think Emmanuel's going to find a, find a place to start. Um, and maybe you test him out at tackle, see if he can hold up. But I think bless Harris looks like the more natural tackle to me. This guy fits in it with guard. And I think looks with, good at guard. Looks I think good with those guard. two, yeah. you're, you're really shoring up, the floor, like we talked about, mm-hmm. where previously one or two injuries in your offensive line is shot. Now you can go two or three before you're you're really in that doomsday scenario. And I think, I think that's a big. I think in this season we're not we're not talking about winning anything significant. We're just talking about 
showing that the floor of the program is raising and that we don't have to worry about making a bowl game anymore. And so I think this is an important step to kind of shoring up that possibility. Yep. I got you. Yep. yep. Seven, eight. That's kind of the target for me. That's been the target for everybody else. That's regular season wins, by the way, uh, whatever kind of damage we do in the mind. key car care bowl is on <laughs> us. Or the, I'd like to play in the mayonnaise bowl myself. That'd be a fun little target. Oh, they, I like the old, the they old do Duke a good job Mayo. on Twitter. <laughs> yeah, they do. Uh, a, 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 a bowl promoter after my own heart. I'm with you guys. I still honestly think that I, I think that Caden Lyles will take a, yeah. I don't think he's going to be as good as maybe they thought he was going to be when they took him, but I think he'll be good enough to be the starter based off of fall camp. I think that he'll see a nice progression kind of like Dylan Gibbons did another kid who came after spring. Uh, but that would be interesting to put Darius and have Caden and Maurice on the bench at center. Um, that would be very interesting. Um I think it would also, I'm just thinking about potential injuries. It would suck if you got like Washington injured at center and yeah. then you've got those two guys at center. Mm-hmm. They actually, everybody on the line is pretty versatile except for the two guys at center. They just play center, <laughs> but that'd be interesting. I mean, that that's one of the, the, I guess the juggling decisions Mike Norville has to make between like that may be the best five, but you know, right. you got to think about some of the other stuff, but interesting stuff, it's stuff to keep our eyes on and um, awesome pickup. This kid's solid. This was this was a good win by Florida State. Beat out, beat out a beat out a uh, rival that's supposedly on fire on the recruiting trail. So uh, screw you, Miami. That sucks. <laughs> but um, it was good, man. Good pickup. Yeah, uh, yeah. Florida State hope the night might get some momentum on the trail. I mean, they can't touch the momentum of the triple option right now. Like guys, we're literally almost at five thousand subscribers. If you're watching this video and you're not subscribing, do so, please. <laughs> Tell everybody. And people are starting to take notice. I mean, you guys have taken notice of the work we've done. Our following has grown really like steadily ever since we really got into this channel about like a year and a half ago. And people are starting to take notice. And there are going to be some some changes going on with the show. I can't really get into too much of the specifics right now. But uh, people are taking notice. So, I mean, I don't know, Adam and Kevin, if you guys want to expound upon what's going to be happening. There's going to be a little bit of some shakeup kind of stuff going on, all positive, mm-hmm. in my opinion. Yeah, so uh, I guess over the next week, uh, expect expect an announcement from Kevin and I um, in the short term, and uh, we'll see what happens in the long term there. Um, yeah, I, I would imagine we'll probably put a video out to kind of, you know, making that announcement, what's going to be going on. Uh, we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. It's going to be a lot of it's exciting times uh, for yes. the triple option crew, I think. And even though the timelines may not align 100 percent, we'll see Kevin and Adam, you know, they've got they've, they've got their announcement going on. All superpowers are always going to be together. Well, we'll see. There's a, there's a cosmic <laughs> attraction. It's like the it's like the the crappy part of the movie Hitch at the beginning. Like those two guys are Charlie's. <laughs> they're on. They're the face guys. I'm oh, drunk. Will baby. Smith. We'll find each other in the end, even though if we don't start off together. But I mean, I'm I'm pretty damn happy for Adam and Kevin. We'll see what's going on. But we can't keep into specifics, Kevin. I don't know if you want to get in anything, but there's going to be some fun announcements coming up over the days and weeks. No, that's 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 all I want to want to tell. Him. There you go. Get <laughs> us to feel 5K, so uncomfortable. But, yeah, get us to five k. Come on, hey, get, get us to five k, the- and we promise you, Kev, film. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's right. Get the five k, and we'll analyze Kevin as a quarterback. That would be oh, fun. I can't high school days. Well, listen, guys. <laughs> thank you for all the support. We know that you're going to be there with whatever combination of us three going forward, or when we go and who gets back to this, and then the three card money and blah 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 and the left and all that good stuff. Shake, shimmy, 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 shimmy. Whatever. You guys are going to be there with us, and we appreciate you. And we couldn't be going to where we're all diverging and converging without you i know that i'm being cryptic i know that i'm being vague i wish i could be more specific but i can't love you keep chopping on chop 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 chop